Welcome to PCM Pracy. I'm Doug Anderson at the Toronto Delta Chelsea Hotel, the last PCM that we'll be holding at the Chelsea as we move on to the beautiful Weston Hotel in future. But this is going to be a great PCM with 150 participants leaving energized and well informed. Please join me in welcoming Michael. Michael? Two new senior leaders received an energetic welcome. First up was our new Chief Executive Officer and Chief Administrative Officer, Michael Balagas. Um, thank you, Linda. I'm even impressed with me after that. <laughs> and uh, this is your first uh, Provincial Coordinators meeting. It is, and uh, I, I have to be honest, I had no idea what to expect. Um, and. Uh, it's been good, and it's been um, a, a sort of real immersion course for me, which I think I really appreciate, because it's one thing to, uh, to read this stuff, to read the briefing notes, to read the backgrounders, and it's another thing to hear people discuss them and uh, get a much, much, much better feel for the issues in an environment like this. And do you think that there's uh, a particular role that staff could play at these meetings? Um, yeah, I do. I, I think there's a really important role and I'm going to be speaking to folks about how we can maximize staff participation at the meetings because I think first of all it's very helpful for staff to just hear what the leaders are saying uh, directly, no filters, no manager filter, no nothing, just a, a direct, uh, directly hearing. But also I think the, uh, uh, I think the leaders like the opportunity to meet the staff and, uh, and talk to them directly and take advantage of their expertise and their knowledge. And uh, it's, uh, it's good, and I'm going to be trying to find ways to get uh, more staff to participate more in these, uh, these kinds of meetings. I just want to thank you. I want to thank Linda, Vicki, your entire board, Michael. Also announced at the PCM was the appointment of Marie Kelly as our new Director of Labor Relations Contract Administration. Could you give us a few tips on how it's going to be to work with you and for you? Well, I'll let those who work for me uh, be the evaluator of that, but uh, I think people will say I have a great passion for what I do. I'm very excited about the job. Um, I think it's important for us to mobilize our members and make sure that they're uh, understanding all of the issues that are important to all of us here in Labour. Um, I think I have a few strategies that I take uh, back from uh, other unions and other experiences that I've had that will be helpful. I'm looking forward to working with the whole team here, the staff and the leadership in making sure ONA continues to be the vibrant, strong, uh, strategic union that it's always been. Do you think there will be any difficulty coming from a male-dominated steelworker union to the Ontario Nurses Association? I think if you can swim amongst the steel workers union, I think you can swim just about anywhere. But I'm looking forward to being around a room full of sisters and women and uh, fighting on a different front. It's, uh, it's all the same, but it's going to be a little bit different for me. Gallery owners felt slighted that Toronto was chosen over New York. This is how powerful this uh, display is. And we were More new faces. We have a new so board member, Pam Mancuso, for Region 1, who also holds the portfolio for human rights and equity. At this point in time, I'd like you to think back and tell viewers what motivated you to become a member of the ONA board. Well, I've been in uh, a leadership role at our local for 27 years, and uh, as well, I was on the human rights and equity team uh, a few years back. And uh, I wanted to learn more, more about the organization, more about the whole province and how ONA impacts all the workplaces across the province. So that's why I got more involved. Linda Housen Stroud delivered a tough message on accountability, urging our leaders to stand tall and to lead, to follow policy, to show financial integrity, and to resolve executive conflict. I want to talk to you a little bit about accountabilities as leaders. Our members are depending on you. You are the governance structure where the $15 million is going to on a monthly basis for you to invest in our members' work. To support the collective agreement. The message of accountability was not lost on our new local coordinators, as one of our roving reporters discovered. I love Ona. <laughs> Woo! Um, I just wanted to be more active, and I had really good mentors from Pam Galley, and I wanted to support the rest of my executive and the members of 
local 19. The communication is the key. The communication from the site reps down to my uh, into my bargaining unit presidents, into me, the, the treasurer secretary, the communication. And bringing this information up here from the provincial coordinators meeting right down to my executive, right down to the bargaining unit meetings, that's where I think my role is key. How do you feel about the communication role, getting that communication piece out to everyone? Um, I feel good about it. We've made some changes at our um, local exec. Um, we have a few other new people on the executive as well. So um, I'm trying to streamline tasks and that so we can get the communication out to the nurses, um, to the members, because we are, are about 2,900 members. So that's a lot of communication. Um, and shift workers and that so we're all taking a part in that so I'm hoping it'll be successful but we're gonna keep going and try change as we need to. We still value patient care and if we continue to place that value on patient care then we have got to be able to drive the force in the workplace. I'm scared stiff. <laughs> but you do understand Linda says we're all here together we're here to yes. give you strength and work together. Well yes I you. have Anne Clark as a great mentor. Linda did ask me to speak to contract admin uh, rights and obligations around flu shots. One of the hot issues addressed during the meeting was that of flu vaccines. Ona's position is that it is an individual decision and should not be mandatory. But it's very, very difficult issue to argue in the press because it is then switched over to being about us not caring for our patients. We believe that it is an individual right. However, we have negotiated out language in the collective agreement to protect the patients and to protect the nurse. Linda rolled out ONA's new targets. The leaders called them bang on. I would say that we would have been in the red two years ago there. We're at yellow now, and I'm really hoping that we get to green before I retire. Members also heard from the Working Families Coalition, supported by the labor movement to make Ontario voters aware of the right-wing policies that threaten working-class families in this province. The Working Families Coalition has an aggressive campaign to stop right-wing politicians like Tim Hudak. What were you hoping to achieve today in talking to our members? Well, Leone has been one of the original founders of uh, Working Families. And so we wanted to have this opportunity to update ONA with what's happening with the Working Families uh, campaign, let them know what's happening politically at Queen's Park, and hopefully ensure that uh, our relationship continues into the future. ONA Chief Negotiator Dan the Man Anderson and Valerie McDonald opened up about a tough round of bargaining to come this fall. What issues do you see for upcoming bargaining in the next year? Well, there are going to be a lot of issues, Grant. Uh, many challenges for, uh, for the team. There are a number of issues left over from the last round of bargaining that I think we have to address. Uh, first and foremost, I think, is the, uh, the issue around not being paid for the six and subsequent absence. We'd like to get the uh, retiree benefits uh, kicking in at age 55 rather than, paid, than at age uh, uh, 57. Uh, we have layoffs that, uh, that are occurring in, uh, uh, in many, many hospitals, uh, issues uh, uh, pertaining to uh, skill mix, uh, issues pertaining to the flu shot that we, uh, that we talked about today. So they're, um, uh, to me, those are big, important issues, but of course our members will uh, tell us the issues that are important to them uh, when they uh, fill out the Have a Say questionnaire. Uh, later on, uh, later on this month. In Canada today, health officials say another person has died from the SARS virus in Toronto, the country's largest city. The death toll there is now 30. In the last... On a more reflective note, we marked the 10th anniversary of SARS, or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Ona lost two members. Nelia La Rosa, a nurse at North York General Hospital, died in June 2003 at age 51 from the second wave of SARS to hit Toronto. A month later, we lost a second Toronto nurse, 58-year-old Tekla Lin. And it made, excuse me, many others seriously ill. 
Justice Campbell was a great man, and uh, he uh, led an amazing SARS inquiry. And uh, his report should never be forgotten, and we have to make sure that we hold those accountable in government and at the employer level, you know, to protecting worker safety in our workplaces. Thank you, Erna. And Nancy, can you tell us, what have you, we have achieved since then? Well, ONA in particular has achieved quite a bit, but not enough. Um, we have uh, built our capacity among our membership and staff to handle health and safety issues, and we've brought the focus of health and safety uh, in healthcare. We brought healthcare, we brought healthcare's nose into health and safety, whereas before they used to be ignoring it. So, anyways, thank you, Linda, and uh, help me give Linda a round of applause. First Vice President Vicki McKenna wouldn't let Linda step down from doing double duty as interim CEO for six months without saying thanks. For Linda, it was a great meeting. Well, folks, that was quite an assignment, an exhausting couple of days. And as I spend my hard-earned money recuperating, I wanted to leave you with a little tip about political action, one of the themes of this year's PCM. The next time a politician comes knocking on your door, here's what you can do. This is Doug Anderson for PCM Pracy. Hi, I'm Mike Summers, your state representative. How you doing? Great. Good. I'm going door to door trying to get to know my constituents. Oh, door to door, huh? That takes a lot of time. Why don't you just go down to the unemployment office and see everybody at once? <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> and you're right. We, we can't let this area's workforce lay idle. That's why bringing in new business is my number one priority. How? Through tax incentives. See, we're going to make it cheaper for out-of-state businesses to set up shop right here in Lanford. So they get a tax break? Yeah, that's why they come here. Well, who's going to pay the taxes that they ain't paying? Well, you, you will, but <laughs> you'll be working. Good, steady employment. Union wages? Well, now, part of the reason these companies are finding it so expensive to operate in other locations... So is they're going to dump the union so they can come here and hire us at scab wages, and then for that privilege, we get to pay their taxes. Is your husband home? <laughs> well, he's on the phone trying to keep us from losing our house. Hey, let's talk about that. <laughs> See, we're broke. I can't even afford to go buy groceries unless it's double coupon day. Mm -hmm. You know, we should talk about that. Oh, but I have several houses I have to get to before I quit. Well, for hey, great. I'll come with you. <laughs> Thank you.